Hello and welcome back for round number 13 here at the Bochum Regional Championship in Germany. I'm Daud Hofmann, joined by Connor. I didn't even have time to stand up between the turnaround, between those two rounds. That yeah, was insane. so um, yeah, usually day two doesn't have as many people um, as day one. So between rounds, the time gets really short. So we're here again with round 13. But before we kick in, uh, we have something to show you. Um, we have like a little thing prepared. It's a um, nice little uh, set of slides. Yeah, so it's a graph with the yeah. day two meta game, which I just made with the last round. Whoa, so look at the size of that peak boy. Yeah, <laughs> so actually, this is uh, auto generated. So it just makes the Pokemon big according to the He's percentage. A big and Pikachu is like, look at this percentage. Anyway, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you can see, there is a lot of Mewtwo and Pikachu Zekrom. But if you've seen other meta shares like this, you will also notice that the share of Mewtwo and Mew isn't actually as big mm -hmm. as, like, usually the most played deck. A lot of people kind of think that it's best deck in format, so it gets played a lot and then also cuts a lot. So you often have like a 25%. Um, but here it's r very fairly distributed. It's uh, actually very interesting. Some people may think like, oh yeah, this is like what a healthy format looks like. But healthy format is just like a really a personal yeah. thing. So but these are like Mewtwo and Mew and previously also ADP have hovered around the 25% marks in top 30 or in day twos from what I remember from previous meta breakdowns we've looked at. So the fact that they've like, so Mewtwo has dropped down to 18%, which is a fairly big drop off. But also, ADP has dropped down to egg eight percent, which is like way down. Um, so as a result, it's now um, a case of like, what what's the option to now have um, like attackers and people going well? ADP just doesn't have the flexibility. Like everything else here is flexible. Um, so it's just a weird thing to see it drop that far. That's like a loss of nearly twenty percent. Yeah, that's a lot of people going. ADP, not for me. Yeah, I'm very actually very interested in Pikachu Zekrom because I didn't really expect it to mm. be that mm -hmm. much played and then also uh, make th that big of a turnaround for day two. Well, and, w and what's really interesting is so people were like, well, maybe we go back and look at the tag call engine, right? Because that was what we gained from this set, and people yeah. thought maybe we could actually get this deck back to where it used to be using this new engine. The ones we've seen doing well are just playing Pika Judge. Like the old school Pika Judge. And I think that is actually a reflection on the format as a wider thing. Because so many people are playing Greens decks, and you want to beat Mewtwo, which means you want to power plant people. Yeah. The, the fact that you can go stamp, plant, pray is the, is yeah, the joke. But on top of that, you now have the Pika Judge option to go, well, I don't even have to wait to fall behind. I'm just going to go Judge, Jirachi, hit you, and hope that you've bricked. Yeah, also, there is a lot of control. I don't know. Like, in Europe, these are usually a little bit different. There are a lot of people that like control here in general, but also now control is a, a lot stronger than it used to be. Mm -hmm. It gained Bebe and Bryson Man, so um, you can just deck out your opponent really quick, which was usually something that you kind of struggled with in a best of three really did. Uh, tournament that you like you lost the first game, and then you ca could have won the second game. Yep. But just your deck isn't fast, like it's not quick enough mm -hmm. to uh, win, actually. Oh, we so actually saw Jesper do that on stream, right? Yeah. Like, he's only playing the one Bella Bella Bryson, but if you get your deck thin enough, you can actually just go put it back in your deck, draw it again, mill them again, and mill six yeah. cards a turn, which massively puts a clock on people. Yeah. Also, we have the uh, Garchomp Giratina. There are actually two versions now. Like, on yeah. this thing, it's not paired. But, um, yeah, a lot of, like, that was a big discussion point going into this tournament. Mm -hmm. Like, do you play it with Roxy or without? And yeah, there are uh, some of some of them made their way to day two as well. Yep. And yeah, so we see, we see that actually the the Roxy build is quite a lot less represented. I think it's one of those ones where it's kind of it's go big or go home. It's if you hit it and you hit basically if you hit your Roxies and double Weezings when like not even when you want it like drawing six cards it's always fine. You just need to find them at the right point, and if you do, great. I personally think it's not consistent enough at doing that specific bit that it's worth playing over the other version, to be honest. Um, as I think our players are more or less um, set up and ready to go. I think they're just finishing up yeah, shuffling. One last thing I want to mention is um, Gardevoir. 
Because yeah. I think like it's pretty nice against ADP. Can just one well, one to knock out them. But there's not as much ADP. But mm -hmm. there used to be a l like there yesterday there was so much. It was the second most played deck out of all. Mm -hmm. And now it fell a lot behind because AD like I think a lot of people made the call that they want to beat ADP and then have a decent chance against the rest. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of stall, and as you saw here, especially if you don't play the um, Oma Star, yeah, it's such you a difficult such matchup. A rough matchup. So if you compare this to yesterday, which yeah isn't r reflected here, um, <laughs> Gardevoir fell behind a lot. Yeah, it really did. And it's actually one of those decks where you have to you have to nail it for the format, like specifically of like because you because you have the choice of your charms, you have to really w nicely read exactly what you think. Is going to be there, and how often you think you're going to face them, and like your ratios of certain things. It's actually one of the reasons why I think Pico Ron might have done so well. Is the Guardi players could have played the Lightning uh, Charm. None of them were expecting this yeah. much Pico Ron, and the Pico Ron to be doing well, which means that if you're not playing the Charm, you actually lose that game. It goes like, a, like you just have no option against them. And I really think that this is more of a symptom of the surprise yeah. factor for Pico Ron coming through, and people going, "Oh wait, this is still a deck." Yeah, oh, there are a lot of nice. different builds. I think it's very interesting. So, yeah, players are setting up. We didn't even say. Yeah, should we cut to see who, who it is? Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, I so think I've seen this guy before. Yeah, Todd Reckler. Yeah, I've heard of him. Well, he doesn't need any introduction. Everyone uh, knows who he is. But here, if you are maybe new, Todd Reckler is by many considered to be the best player right now. Um, maybe even the best player who ever played. Um, the results just speak for themselves. Um, he has the international wins. <laughs> yep, and a regional win now. He's yeah. got a regional win. Well, yeah. Like um, in he, Cologne, he that was the yeah. last regional we streamed. He actually won with uh, also with Mewtwo. Mm -hmm. A very interesting Mewtwo deck. His now his Mewtwo deck that he's playing today. I think it looks kind of uh, familiar. And his opponent uh, Raz Wolp. Um, also, actually has had a really good couple of seasons. Like look, like the one in Paris, the uh, the Nante, um event, coming top four. That's the, like, the, the last one before this format. Yeah. And to c be able to go convert from format to format in a clean way like this is actually quite difficult because the games themselves can be very different. And like the actual decks you want to play can really change and your matchups may look like they might be the same decks, but how you navigate each matchup uh, makes a big difference. Yeah, <laughs> Raz is actually really good. Um, like it's he, he started playing, I think, after I um, stopped playing. Mm -hmm. So it's... Like, I like I only know him from results, but his results are so good, and um, it's actually amazing because he has to travel a lot for tournaments. Yeah, sure. So he doesn't. I don't think he plays cups. So he just plays regionals, and uh, yeah. But maybe if he maybe maybe we can get him. Like maybe if he wins, yeah, we can get him for an interview. Yeah, and but he is um, yeah pretty strong contester a uh, contender playing against uh, Tortier, which is always. Yeah, slightly terrifying to be honest. No, I don't. I don't uh, know. It really depends on your personality, I think, uh, because a lot of a lot of people don't really get intimidated by results sure. from your opponents, and some people kind of let themselves like, yeah, like they they get intimidated and then they start to uh, make misplays because of that. This like there's a little bit of psychological effect <laughs> in tournament games in general because. There is so much interaction, and then also you can like some opponents are disrespectful, and I think some opponents are actually disrespectful on purpose sure. to make the opponent be a little bit annoyed, mm -hmm. and then maybe bait them into a misplay. Um, especially like when you, you know, there's this common thing when you have like a huge hand, mm -hmm. and you know, and you need something, and it's you look at the top card, and if, we the, saw if it it's the card, yeah, yeah, you need, then you just show it, and then your opponent gets angry because they think, oh, he had so much luck, even though of course it didn't yeah. matter. And if he has just put it in his head and then played it out, you are less angry, even though it doesn't matter. Uh, so this is actually interesting. So let's see if the Ralph matchup is also interesting. It's a Mewtwo mirror, yes. but it's not really like as we were saying yesterday. There's actually a couple of different ways of building Mewtwo. There's the aggressive version, which is what kind of Raz is building, and then towards slightly more chilled out version. Um, but we actually see uh, the mirror Megalopony starter. Uh, this is actually a really big deal in this matchup. But having the access to, to the Megalopony's attack means that you can just suddenly do a load of damage for three energy as opposed to having to get the big numbers of attachments in. I mean, four is not that much for this deck, but still makes a big difference. Um, and also we saw the pickup of the Weakness Guard energy, which is a huge, huge card in this matchup because both Mewtwo's want to hit each other for weakness. And if you can stop 
your opponent from doing that. It means that they can't do things like Turbo Strike for 240. Okay, you're not getting KO'd, but it means that you're then in range of like Cross Divide GX and like certain spread options that the deck wants to play. So just denying that as an option aggressively and early like this makes life a lot easier. And we saw that Raz prioritized this by going, right, I'm going to straight away off my Guzmahala, I'm getting my weakness card and I'm getting my tag hold to, you know, tag yeah, for that. I'm very interested how Raz is actually um, piloting this matchup since he only plays one regard energy and no Jirachi GX, which I, th I don't think anyone still plays. No, that was like a but one day kind of thing. It was like at the beginning, everyone was like, well, they're in the same set. They like kind of belong together. And then everyone was like, well, but it kind of loses you the matchup at the same time. Yeah. But um, yeah, with only one weak art energy, there are a lot of plays that you just can't do. Um, because usually you want like the f you put the first Mewtwo down and only put it down when you have a weak art energy so it doesn't get great captured and hit for weakness. And then for the second one, you ideally want to do the same. But this option so is not open for us. Has actually got a really awkward hand you saw by the, the length of the time like the welder always had to go active he's now got the cherish ball the problem is he's got two other welders in hand and no energy which means that he's in this kind of well can i afford to do any of this away and he basically plays the dot deck as far as if you ask him about like what the cards are in his deck he says the dene and then the others and he knows he wants to discard this but discarding two well, that having already used another one means that you're super, super reliant on getting Turbo Strike online quickly to be able to do basically anything in this game. Yeah, I think... Well, unfortunately, there is no way to get Welders back. Um, well, in theory, you could play Pawpet, but mm -hmm. they, n most people choose not to because... Yeah, like uh, b before when Welder was basically your only option as a supporter card, you played usually Pawpet. But now you have a lot of other options as well. So you can see Tord here actually plays for Hapu mm -hmm. and two Melolana. So um, there's no need for Pulpit and just using Didenne. Interestingly, um, Tord still plays for Didenne, which yeah, Connor just mentioned. Uh, and the, the lists are very different. Uh, so Rust plays actually a Tech Call engine. Mm -hmm. So like we saw turn one, he just goes Tech Call, get Mewtwo, get Hala then use Hala to get the uh, weak guard energy. And he also got the Cyclone online mm -hmm. that prevents Todd from using the um, giant hearth. So it just makes the uh, welders a lot weirder. But Todd, yeah, trash ball into the Dana and just dumped his hand. Yep. Now going, I kind of like that, going for the Fion, because he, he attaches to the Megalopony. He's actually hitting like, was it 180, I think, already on the Mega um, into the Mewtwo? It's 60 plus 60 for each yes. other uh, uh, GX. So he can actually force, like, normally your opponent has a choice. Doesn't happen when they only have one thing on the bench. You can go, right, give me that Mewtwo. I'm going to hit into you. And basically, do you have turn 2 300? And turn three, 2 300 on the Megalopony is actually not as good. You know, okay, you take three prize cards, but you really want that to be a Mewtwo. You want to remove a major threat and. Okay, you sort of do, but they can still use it from the discard pile. Yeah, and here you see the power of Fiona. I think the main reason to play this is against Doll. Yeah. Um, so it pr like it puts Lily Spoko Doll back to the bench, then there's to promote something else. But this card is very versatile because it's it's just a very general good thing. Sometimes if you just want to have like a prize card, mm -hmm. then you can like you can out knock out all the Pokemon on the bench, but not the active one. They can you can just use Fiona or in an early game situation like this where your opponent was very limited with the Pokemon they can put down. Of course, Raz does not want to bench uh, any more Pokemon EX or GX, mm -hmm. but because he doesn't want to bench any more Pokemon, Fiona just gets a lot stronger. And we see Raz actually using uh, Mellow Lana for the full effect, switch, discard two fire energy, grit, um, and heal 120 damage. But now Tord can still use Fiona again and put the Mewtwo on 240 if he wants to. Yeah, so he did actually get the final welder um, on this Hapu, so he can actually take it for next turn if he wants to. If he doesn't, though, he's out of Welder, like just gone, which means that he can't really, like, he has to get one attack at a time as opposed to having multiples ready, uh, which is what he ideally wants to get. Um, having the Megalopony already doing, like, threatening two hit knockouts on everything and really slowing Raz down because Raz, like you said, can't go wide on his bench. He can't go, right, I need options, I need another Mewtwo ready, I need to get. 
uh, did any of my own to kind of cycle through the deck. Oh, Makes and like he actually harder. discards the welder. Yeah, he's gone wild. What's a welder? So now he really does need a way to get another um, yeah, Pokemon yeah. online. He does have a charge ball I and sent an energy. another did any. Yeah, it really looks like it. Um, with this kind of hand, there is nothing you can do. The only thing, like your option is just yeah, go for the Dene, bench another Mewtwo and Mew. But this is really not something you want to do because then it puts you at four Pokemon EX in play. This means uh, 300 damage from low penny, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, <laughs> uh, 60 plus 60 for each, so yeah. Yeah. And so, and that, that means it's a one hit knockout as opposed to the two hit that, uh, that Tor will be threatening with. Yeah, so now Tor just attaches energy to the Dene and attacks. See, and, and this is the, this is a bizarre game state, right? Of just going right. Well, neither of us can play any cards because we both opened the Megalopony, and now we're kind of having to go very, very slowly and kind of gently around this matchup, as opposed to this is quite often just turn two three hundred into three hundred. Yeah, I and win. here here we see the exact same move by Russ. As just go for. Uh, Escape board, retreat into Mewtwo oh. and Mew. It can also copy Pokemon from the bench that you should never forget. Yep. So you can also just copy other tag teams like <laughs> Lopani. So, yeah, 180 damage for Todd now. So I can actually see that uh, Todd is probably having to go for the Dene now. And probably is hoping to basically hit the Fion because he can Fion take out the Mega Lopani. Okay, well, that's three price cards. Well, but yeah, but <laughs> it, I don't yeah. think it puts him no, too I much in an advantage. Yeah, true. Since, like, usually you would say, okay, I knocked out the, the, the Pokemon I'm afraid of. Now it's gone. But in this, <laughs> in this deck, you can still copy it from the discard pile. So it's really weird because it doesn't really buy you an advantage. But then on the other hand, it puts your three prize cards away from winning. So Todd then only needs to knock out that active Mewtwo. Mm -hmm. However, that active Mewtwo is really powerful right now because it got a Rainbow Energy and a Weak Guard Energy. So it can't be a hit for weakness. And it's almost ready to use a Jax attack and heal damage off. Mm -hmm. So Todd needs to put himself in a situation where he can use a one-hit knockout or put like a completely different game plan. But currently it looks like he really needs to take a one-hit knockout on that. But for that to do him, uh, for him to do that, he needs another Mewtwo going. But with this uh, access to Welder, I, I don't know if there are three or four in the Discord pile. I think I think Toad's all gone from Welder. So yeah, so only hand attachments, which means if a Mewtwo from him gets one-hit knocked out, he basically loses. So it will be very interesting to see. Like I, I think if there is anyone who knows how to maneuver this, it's Tart. Sure. And you can see that he may, he managed to hit the weakness guard on his own onto that Mewtwo because otherwise well yeah, the Megalopony goes just it just gets it probably gets one hit knocked out. I mean yeah, right now it's st still three hundred. So yeah, if Raz feels like it, he can use a gust effect. Um he does play three great catcher actually. So he has a kind of a good chance to get them. There's nothing for him to search for them, so except for of course Jirachi, which is in the stack as well. That's a whole lot of dice on a yeah. Pokemon just not KO'd. <laughs> All right. So do you know? Uh, yeah. How, how many extra energy do you need again for the for Jax attack for from you two? Uh, I think it's only two extra, but it but it requires the second psychic, which he now has because of the rainbow. I think it's two psychic colorless to, um, uh, for the base. Yeah, and so here we see it, just like I said last turn. That's just his. Oh, it's only the one extra, so there we go. He has it. Yeah, just one extra. I would like you would assume that that's such a strong effect actually requires you for two extra yeah. energy or something like that, but or maybe one extra colored energy. But Mewtwo's just like, well, let's get rid of all the damage. It uses his Jax attack, which was really threatening before because it always threatened to one it knockout, but. Um, let's see what he also plays because there's probably he doesn't have many other like bomb attacks of like big old damage coming out. The the main one is the yeah. He Charizard. plays he plays neither Mercago nor um, Blacephalon. Yeah. So it's I don't think there is an easy way for him to take one knockout, but this is still a very very threatening position. So, Todd, this was that used to be the old like high five when you set up for six, um, but. At this point, on the win and in, these p two players have gone. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this too seriously now, uh, and have finally get second energy onto the Mewtwo. Um, he can copy, burn and confuse. Oh boy, <laughs> having to uh, basically cross his fingers and pray. Uh, yeah, if he has Switch or Melolana. Okay, so it's two damage counters. Just completely redo this turn. Yep. Well, he has a Dene in hand. 
even the, he even got the tech call, so now Melo Lana, switch, retreat, there's an escape board on the bench. And he can attack again. <laughs> and, yeah, he, he is like, yeah, I just like, switch and then just, I use uh, Lopani and like... Let's just <laughs> skip that, shall like, we? Oh, yeah, okay, you're right. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> I guess. I guess that's one way you could beat me. Um, so, actually a very quick game one. This is not a series that you really expect to go all that long, right? It's, yeah. it's like, well, we saw it yesterday go quite a while, but Mewtwo mirrors are aggressive. They have the Mega Lopani, which basically goes, right, if you, put, you need to put GXs in play, I'm going to get you. Yeah. If you don't, well, I'm just going to use my, uh, my, my Charizard GX, and I'm going to get you. Like, they don't kind of take the... They, they can kind of go, no, I win now Yeah. at any given point. And that's actually the downside of Tord's List. And a thing that I think there was a discussion um, amongst the group that were testing it of a lot of decks, like specifically Mewtwo's, had cut the Megalopony. Um, it was in the list originally because it was the best way of dealing with decks playing lots of Dedenne. So it was like, well, you can afford to play your Dedenne engine now because actually you can play them, they're not costing you damage. The Tag Call engine doesn't have that you know, downside. It can yeah. just, just set up using the Tag Call and occasionally benching. Tord is basically forced to have three or four GXs in yeah. play every single game, which means Lego Megalopony, which is a single turn's worth of Attach Welder, just nukes basically the whole deck. Yeah, this is a very, like, you could see how difficult it was for Tor to get around this, because his only way of drawing most of the time was Dedenne. Mm -hmm. But he used Dedenne, and that made just Raz deal more damage. And his deck is, like, Raz's deck is really con consistent. He plays four Jirachi, a lot of people only play three. Mm -hmm. um, and he also has the tech calls on top of that, and then, yeah, he always finds, an like, he can always get some outs out of pretty much everything. Um, Torch list is very, very different. No Jirachi, yeah, um, four Dedenne, four Cherish Ball, no Tech Call. So they are, while they're playing a mirror match, the way these decks works is light, night, and day. Yeah, and I think that's the reason why you build either way it c can be justified in, in both cases. Like, we know that the aggressive build basically puts any deck in the format. So, like, that's the, oh, I, I consider the Tag Call engine the slightly more aggressive build. Puts any deck in the format on a clock. And it's a short clock of like, well, attach, welder, attach is 300 from the Charizard GX. So that's some tag, well, some tag team gone. Plus then you can find a way of doing dealing with another tag team really easily. So having those big knockout options is huge. Whereas Tor just like, it has a much more toolboxy approach. It's kind of far more um, happy to kind of set itself up slowly and have a lot of options. We've done it again. It's a mega low puff start. Why? <laughs> Who decided that? Um, so okay. the price cards aren't too awkward, I don't think. Yeah, they look really normal, I, I, I say. Um, let's just go into the, the main game. Game. Um, yeah, nothing too interesting on both sides. They both have one Welder prize. Otherwise, looks like a very usual distribution. One saw Galeo prize for Todd, but of course, I guess he plays two. He plays two. Yeah. Had that been Raz, that actually would have been bad news. But we know Depen that he's yeah, depending on the game state. Yeah. I guess. Um, like normally, that you'd consider that bad because you want to attach set, set, set yourself up. But we've seen Raz doesn't want to do that. He's not hanging around. He he's got he, he wants to get, win his win winning in. Go have a bit of food. Chill for top eight. Todd's not going to have to win two games in a row. Um, to, to make himself locked for top eight, um, as he actually came like to get to this point to be on a winning in, having had the kind of weird start he had yesterday, um, just shows that you know you're never out of these tournaments. You know, I think he was. Um, I think at one point he was two one two or one one two. I think was, uh, at one stage, um, and ran through the tournament um, on a comeback, and is now at the point where he is kind of coming in. At I'm just trying to work out where we're gonna see. Okay, so that's a Sog Sogaleo discard for Raz, so he can. Yeah, that's use pretty his nice. Um, well, Raz build is, m I think it it's more built around yeah, like you said, a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Just try to get your stuff early, then use Welder and just swing. Yeah. While Todd is more trying to set up, and then he's like, he has a lot of, like he has a lot of attackers that he can do tricks with and Ras is just trying to be quick mm -hmm. he, and this is and but this is still interesting that he doesn't really play like Ras doesn't really play something that can take a big wanted knockout sure 
um, without a Jax attack, which, which well, Torque does. Well, the Mega Penny so. does in this particular well, case. Well, yeah, depending so depending on the board state, and it does. This is actually a different state now for Raz, right? So he's he's been forced to Dene early, which he didn't have to do last time. And the result of that one extra GX being in, in play means that the Megalopony for Tord is also like, okay, they're doing equal damage now, but it means that neither player really wants to put down this Mewtwo. Like, they are forced to go, well, I'm just going to, oh dear, okay, there's the Welder as well, so this is going to be 180 straight into the um, into the Megalopony. Yeah, well done. Yes. So just uh, three energies, so this is turn two. Yeah, well, this why is not? His first turn, right? Jumping Balloon for 180 damage. Um, it's really unfortunate that it's not an Amuto, of course, but also he didn't need the weak art energy to prevent the one at knockout on Torque's side. And as you can see, Ras, like he has two Drachis in play, just just needs a um, yeah. just needs a escape board, and then he yeah, always has the Jirachi consistency. Yeah. While Tord, every day then he benches really hurts him. Yeah. And I think this is going to be one of those things where, like, if you were to ask the players afterwards how you think it was going to go, well, Raz will go, well, I won this on the back of me putting in the Megalopony that people have been cutting. And Tord went, well, he played a Megalopony, what do I do? And I think that's, uh, it's one of those, like, single inclusions that when you're making your list, is it, uh, fringe cards, right? And sometimes you make the call of, like, okay, this or some other tech attacker. And they've gone, well, Turns out it's pretty good, especially in the mirror, as we're seeing now. So, Tord's turn. Looks kind of... It's another Cherish Ball. He's now got basically got the next GX in play, which means that the damage is not going down after this KO from... The yeah, it's kind of annoying, but um, this is still fine. He really does need to bench uh, Mewtwo, Mewtwo, uh, Mewtwo and Mew, of course, because he somehow he needs to get... Um, yeah damage done and here you can see again oh, another one coming in a big problem has to bench another did and now we are at 300 damage once um. more and here you see just how strong mega low company can be yeah did you see one of the cards he discarded which is another odd card in towards list there is a copy of the promo giratina um, in here wasn't it the blacephalon uh no the, 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 that as well but he also plays like one off uh giratina oh that's interesting um so the uh, the sun and moon promo um so I think that's the uh, so it's the, the sound of distortion door, so that those extra single uh, damage counters can ma uh, make a bit of a difference, and also being able to do 130 if they if your Mewtwo opponent doesn't have the weakness guard energy lets you hit through. It also gets you around things like uh, the uh, tag purge. Tag purge is that the last attack tag purge? I couldn't remember then. My mind went blank. Um, um, I don't know any attack name. You're <laughs> asking the wrong person. <laughs> um, so the ability to take that knockout. Uh, is a uh, big difference. Um, so, kind of hit through that. Um, meanwhile, we see that Tord's going to have to go, well, get some energy, welder and smack. Um, he can at least retreat this Lopany, force uh, Raz to have Gust um, to lock him in. And if he gets the, uh, you know, at least makes Raz need to maybe dig some more, commit more cards. But Welder just going to go in instead with the uh, the Megalopony, letting Tord, uh, letting Raz take the knockout next turn. But then Tord can just uh, play a copy of one of his copies of Reset Stamp, stamp it down to three. Hope that that smaller hand size just means that Raz struggles to actually set himself up from there on. So we'll see now. It's going to be. Is it 180? Yeah, it's only 180 yes. damage. So the rabbit and the little puffball thing live to fight another day. Yeah, so. and now Tord again, kind of r really limited in his options. He can only attack. Almost nothing else he can do. You really don't. You don't want to just put some damage counters on a random Pokemon like we saw last game. Um, just like spreading damage isn't as great as it might be for other decks and I mean here he plays Giratina so sometimes if he leaves like 10 if he leaves like 10 then he can yeah, do, sure. do like a really cool play with that um, but yeah this is still 60 damage short and you say that but I'll actually remind you of the games we cast um, in Cologne where we had Tord on stream and there were multiple games where he would do something along the lines of turbo strike into a Dedenne 
Oh yeah, Turbo sure. Strike he does, he does and then play. Play, he has um, the cross divide uh, GX from the Espion and Deoxys. Oh, he actually plays Espion and Deoxys. Yeah. yeah so okay. He, so he has the ways of kind of like picking off weakened things, take multiple prize cards in a single turn. This game state isn't really looking like he's going to get the time to do that because he's got no, multiple, probably not multiple. Um, Kind of GX is in play, so this Megalopony is not going anywhere. And Raz d now has an option to start powering up his Mewtwo and finish powering up his Mewtwo because he also has a Welder. Yeah, <laughs> Welder's too, go too good. Uh, just um, but I don't know, maybe if there is no weak art energy along the way, true, um, there might be an issue here. Um, and, but he hasn't used his GX attack yet, so no, he hasn't. And I think I think I saw him draw a great catcher there as well. Yes, so and he can actually take out the Mewtwo on the bench. And I see a Charizard. Yeah, Charizard breaks, and I don't remember actually what so the GX attack does. So this lets you search for three cards. Yeah, I mean you the GX the attack. Uh, the GX attack is not um, the, uh, I think the main one. It's more for the first one for 180 and search for three. Oh yeah, no. Huge, yeah, the huge GX attack doesn't really help you. Um, but what it looks like instead is going to be p uh, basically power up a Mewtwo on the bench ready, and he can great catch to take out the Mewtwo that Todd has sort of got ready um, on the bench. Oh yeah, the Mega Lopani deals uh, enough damage it, it, right it'll, now. It'll be doing so 300. This so really hurts. <laughs> Tor going. I mean, towards, mm -hmm. towards Mega Lopani stays in play, but I yeah. don't think it matters too much since Ras is just powering up his own uh, Mewtwo and Mew, and Ras can now take the knockout without use of any JX attack. Yep, 300 damage in, and well, three prize cards down. There is a Mewtwo on the bench, so even if this Megalopony goes down, it's powered up. It can just use the next, the same attack. It's going to be hitting for at least 240, which currently KOs everything Tord can play. If he plays a Mewtwo down, which is the only thing it's not going to KO, well, so it's now it's doing 300, so it can KO it. So there's basically no way around this Megalopony for Tord now. So, yeah, it's it's such a difficult situation to be in here. Well, and it's, I think this is down to the fact that we've, like, both times they both started their one of Megalopony. Like, it's not... Okay, right, so starting a one of is actually not too unlikely, but also doing it back-to-back -back games. Well, actually starting a one of Well, it depends on the number of Pokémon in your deck, but... Yeah, exactly. It's a little ca complicated to calculate because the chances up uh, depending on your total count of basic Pokémon. So starting a one of with so many other basic Pokémon it's not too likely because when you calculate that, you have to keep in mind that you can only take any mm -hmm. hand card that has any basic Pokemon. So you have to calculate the chance of drawing a low punny and no other basic Pokemon. And that's it's not, not, it's not too likely. So it's really sure. weird to see this happening to both players both twice games. in a yeah. row. Um, and for Tord, like for Raz, this is a really good starter because Tord is so depending on Pokemon GX. For Tord, it's a terrible starter because it's just one extra GX that is now in play. Would, if, would that have been a Mewtwo? He would have had one less GX attack, in, uh, one less G Pokemon GX in play. So the Mewtwo wouldn't have gotten knocked out. The, the whole game would have been completely different. Yeah. It's uh, the downside of playing 23 Pokemon in your list. I'm not going to go through and count how many of them are basics because some of them are revolutions. Yeah, but, but like 23 Pokemon in your list. Um, and most of those are GXs against a card that's basically designed to punish GXs. Yeah, it's uh, it's like uh, it's it's in it's actually interesting that like Pokemon GX are so strong, so powerful, especially Pokemon Tag Team. That's mm -hmm. why they give three prize cards. But Mega Low Punny, like when you first read the card before it was released, you thought like, oh, this is amazingly strong. Yeah. But it's not like not even every deck plays it, even though it's completely colorless. Yeah. Um, so it's only strong in these kind of situations where your opponent is like completely relying on the energy eggs because most tag teams only need like they have two tag teams in play and then it's just like yeah I mean three hundred uh, three uh, one eighty damage for three energy is still pretty strong. So I think Todd is now digging for his um, Malo Lana uh, copies so he can heal off the damage if he hasn't supported yet this turn. Um, if he's able to get to his Ma Malo Lana, I think he used Welder. I think he's mm, did he discard the Welder? No, because there oh are yeah, now three energy yeah, on, the mute on the bench. So this means that he's no way to heal. He's just going to reset hole. But I guess there is a... Yeah, he really wants a reset stamp. And we see a Fiona actually being used. Yeah. I think this is more just going, look. <laughs> Whereas it's like, what, what are you protective now? 
Okay. So, Torrance is going to go for the stamp and pass. Because if he stamps and passes, he can then maybe get into the cross division GX plays that he might have access to to finish off the megalopony, put something up that's fresh ish, you know, fresh with no damage. He doesn't matter because it's going to get one hit KO'd by a Mewtwo anyway. Um, so, that might be his only option. Um, and basically, it's a stamp. And yeah, so, here we see the research stamp. That's very important since um, he needs Ras to just go into a empty hand. But I don't think, like, I mean, if you would want to pass, why would you use Fiona? It just allows Ras to put Jachi active. And if you leave the Megalopony, well, I mean, yeah, if you leave the Megalopony active, you will just get attacked. But this way, I mean, do you really expect Ras to not get anything out of this? Uh, yeah. So maybe let's see. Let's I see mean, what Tort's game plan is actually. Like, looks if this like. Megalopony stays on the board, it's not impossible for Raz to go attach Welder, his own cross division, pick it off from the bench, because he ha will have enough energy in play. In fact, he doesn't even need to do that. If yeah, he plays Naga Nagal GX. Okay, so he can just use that to he just the bench needs access to that. But even if, even if everything goes right for Tort, I feel like this doesn't really help him too much. No, yeah, I'm not so sure at this point. Like. Okay, just retreat, give him something fresh, and uh, choose your attacker. I think it might even be a cross divide for just the ten, da just the ten damage count is not the two hundred, not the twenty. Um, instead, to uh, take take the KO. So, yep, just take the KO on the megalopony. You've got to do something to catch up, right? And then set up the Mewtwo on the bench to go right. Okay. Um, if you can retreat, you win. Yeah. If you can't retreat, yeah. So we're here good. we see it. So a giant half. He he's going to thin his deck as yeah. aggressively as possible. He very nearly discarded the tag call, which would have been like, made me go. But you want that one? It's more cards out of your deck. And Tor just scoops it up, going, "Nope, okay, that is me. That is the day." And it's Megalopony. Good card. Yeah, really strong. Um, yeah, as you saw on the very last turn, well, I mean, the Fiona didn't really Re end up mattering no. because he n was planning to knock out the Megalopony anyway, so if it would have stayed active, it would have basically had the same effect. Yep. But, yeah, hoping for the opponent to whiff off that was so unlikely. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if Todd goes for something like this, you know there was probably no other yeah, way. It, it you only go for those desperation like stamp and hope there's no switch because yeah. it's only a one retreat cost Pokemon like they don't have to do anything they can just attach retreat which is what we saw yeah uh, so it's like well okay in this situation there's so many outs yeah it's very unlikely for it to go through but also he was already like he was down the first game mm -hmm. so he just needed to maximize his chances and maximizing his chances in this situation is basically just well it's very very unlikely maybe sure. one. Uh, maybe a one percent window, maybe a five percent window, or something mm -hmm. like this. Um, because, like, let me explain to you how unlikely it was for Rath to <laughs> to whiff. He draws three cards off the stamp. He draws one for a turn. You can look at the top five cards of his deck. If any of these cards is the Giant Hearth, uh, no. If he, if he looks at the top five cards, the Giant Hearth is no longer an out. No, it is because he's asleep. You can't retrieve. He's asleep. Oh, true, yeah. So, this is, I was actually trying to work this out. I'm like, Oh, yeah, true, yeah. So, he had to hit... He so, off, is the, off the Giachi, you would need the Tech Call. Yep. Or the uh, Mellow, or the Escape Board directly. Yeah, exactly. Or off the first four, you can draw the Hearth, or an Energy, or something like yeah. this. So, basically, any Whiffing card. Was but pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and I think that's... It shows that, like, Tor took his time before going mm -hmm. for that. Because he was like, right, this is not going to stick. Like, realistically, like, that's like a... 10% play. Like if you if you just sit like probably lower than that to be yeah, honest. Yeah, but I out of uh, the top of my head no one knows. Yeah, but, but like it, but it's like it's a very low percentage play. And if you're going, well, this is my this is it. This is my out. And this is the whole play to your outs. It, if it's stuck, Todd can win a game that he kind of had no right to win in that like, you know, if you well, look at yeah. the board state, yeah, like I it mean. got to that point where it's like, well, okay, he's kind of stolen a win by that. And that's always a really I you have to know sometimes, okay, big risk. And yeah. when you're behind like that in a game, the big risk is much more valuable. When you're, in, when you're leading and winning a game and kind of got the better board state, play conservatively, just take 
what the game gives you. You don't have to be greedy. If you're behind, sometimes you just got to roll the dice and just hope. And that's what we kind of saw in that game. Yeah, all right. So this round finished quite early, so there's a longer break now. As you can see, there's still 17 minutes left on the round. Actually, 11 minutes for the um, main, hall. main hall. So, yeah, we will cut to break, and then we will see each other for round 14. See you guys soon. Hi, welcome back, everyone. Uh, it was a very short break, so we had some time and thought, well, let's just uh, get Raz for an interview. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Very well done. Um, so, like, your flag is Israel, right? Yeah. But you don't have organized play, I think? No, no, we don't have organized play. So for every tournament, you have to fly to Europe, basically? Yeah. Yeah, this is, like, for me, it's very amazing. Uh, it makes this accomplishment just so much more, um, for me at least, so much more amazing. Um, but all right, so let's talk about this game. It was a Mewtwo mirror, but I don't think it was like a very typical mirror match because your lists are so different. Um, I mean, yeah, it wasn't a typical Mew Mew mirror match, basically because most of the lists right now uh, have the Jirachi engine, while Toad doesn't have it, mm. which means he is more he, he needs he needs to use the Dana a lot. Yeah. And that makes my Lopani a big attacker against him. Yeah, the Lopani just completely ran through both games, I think. Um, so you started with it, both games? Yeah, Was we, we both started with yeah, both games. Yeah. Th that's so unlikely, right? Like your opponent just opened, like you both opened the one off Mega Lopani. Um, is this a starter you w want to see in this matchup? Um, no, not really. I'd rather start with a Jirachi. Yeah, I guess. Judge is so nice. Um, what, like, why do you? Uh, is there something about your list that you just that's different from most lists, or would you consider yourself just like it's a typical Mewtwo and Mew list? Um, yeah, I don't think it's very special because already all the text or the rare things that I have there they have been showed already in previous tournaments, like. The Chaotic Swell is from, I think, Kuala Lumpur, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's not that irregular. All right, so what is, um, like, what's the very last card that you cut? Or is there something that you really wanted to fit in but didn't really have the space for? Um, so, basically, uh, I took the original list that won that last tournament in Oceania. Mm -hmm. And with my with my friend Kaiwen from Australia, he helped me to make decisions what to cut, what not to cut, because we really I re he suggested me to add an Agandel and a Reshizard that the originalist didn't have it. So we basically we cut the some consistency cards. We cut the Acrobike for the Naga and the Goose Mahala for. The is out. Mm, all right. Yeah, nothing special. Yeah, so it's your typical mutant mule list. Uh, what were your matchups mm. like until now? Which kind of decks did you play against? Um, uh, I played against a lot of decks, a lot of different decks. Zero mule mule until this. Oh, this so round. it's your first mirror match. Yeah, that's first my first mirror match, and I played against like three ADPs and one ADP bird. More few few more um, green decks, Guardian, El Metal, um, Melamar, and yeah, I, I don't remember. Ah, else. fair enough. Yeah, okay. Well, but what's the deck you do not want to play against? Like, if you could choose an opponent, like if you could choose a deck that you would never play against at this tournament, which would you choose? Ah, uh, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, Probably a deck that I haven't tested enough against it. So you feel like you have pretty nice outs against almost everything with um, this? Baby Blount's green sounds a bit scary, because if you don't start well enough, it can, it can run over you turn by turn, then you lose. All right. What's the, what's the card that you used um, the least this tournament? The least. Mm. I'd say I honestly have no idea. All right, so everything until now was uh, really helpful as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, yeah, I mean, we could talk about the game, but I think it was 
kind of one-sided. I mean, he yeah. like you always, because you play the Jirachi engine, you didn't need to put Pokemon GX in play. Yeah, that's true. So you could always get around with just having Mega Lopani and one Mute and Mew on the bench. And then game two, you had a Dedena as well. But yeah. they, he, like, he couldn't one-hit knock out you. And then any anything, was there like some very interesting stuff about the game that maybe some viewers might have not noticed? Or was it just... I was happy to draw the second Rainbow Energy in the first game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the GX attack was really huge. <laughs> um, I, w I, I actually forgot how many extra energy you needed, and I ex accepted it was two, because it's such a strong effect, but it's only one extra. Yeah, it's one extra. So, yeah. All right, so is there any shout-outs you want to give? Um, Shout-out to everybody who's watching me, to Kaiwen, who, who helped me a lot, and everybody else who knew that they helped me to get this far today. All right, so thank you very much. Um, again, we are going into a break. It's almost timeout on the main round, so the break shouldn't be too long. And see you then.